So in a move which is going to surprise absolutely none of you, Joe Biden has come out to unequivocally say that he does not support recent calls from activists to defund the police. Now, this is again not in any way particularly surprising if you know Joe Biden or know his general track record. So Joe Biden, as you know, has a long track record when it comes to, for instance, the crime bill and his continued and still to, to this day supporting of the crime bill, whereas Hillary Clinton last time around had actually backed off from the crime bill and had apologized for the crime bill. Joe Biden has not apologized for the crime bill and still stands by it, although it did say that there were a few mistakes in the crime bill. Also, Joe Biden's general long track record when it comes to tough on crime politics and leading the sort of tough on crime politics in the Senate back in the 90s. So this is something which Joe Biden does believe. In fact, if you go through Joe Biden's current policy stance, he actually supports expanding police officer budgets because he believes that, you know, if you expand police officer budgets, they'll be able to uh, do things better and handle their job better. Um, that said, uh, Joe Biden does support body cams and he does also support support uh, uh, initiatives of community policing, and he does want to um, have a couple million dollar funding uh, to community police initiatives across the country. So that's Joe Biden's stance, but I think the interesting thing when it comes to this isn't necessarily Joe Biden's position, because again, I don't think this is surprising. I mean, I think, you know, if you've been plugged into politics, like, you saw this coming more or less, right? But I think the interesting thing that we are starting to see out of this is how the Donald Trump campaign is responding to this. Because if you actually go through it, so this is actually a response here um, from Andrew Clark. Now, Andrew Clark is the response director for the Donald Trump campaign. And basically, so this is the, um, this is Biden campaign's um, essential response to when it comes to defunding the police. And then uh, again, this is Donald Trump campaign here saying profile and courage to send out a mid-level campaign campaign staffer to, can't, to claim that Joe Biden opposes defunding the police. Read between the, the lines, Biden is too afraid of the far left to unequivocally say it himself on camera. So this is an interesting tactic that we're starting to see from the Donald Trump campaign right now, and we've seen it in a few other instance, instances, which is framing the idea that Joe Biden is just afraid of the far left, that e even sometimes implying that he actually does agree with the far left, but that he's just, you know, he doesn't want to admit that kind of thing, or that he's so afraid of the far left that really, if you vote Democrat, you're voting, you know, sort of far left, you're voting for that sort of far left agenda, and that Joe Biden really doesn't have the power to stop the far left. Now, this is something, in my opinion, I mean, you guys know my politics. I wish that were the case. I wish that were the case. Unfortunately, it's not the case. But it is the case, um, you know, when it comes to how Donald Trump is trying to frame the campaign, or at least Donald Trump's strategists, they're trying to frame this campaign, frame the issues, and frame the debate as Joe Biden actually is far left. Because the Donald Trump campaign is worried that there's going to be a number of sort of Republican crossover support, which is to say that various kind of swing moderates may be up Upper middle, uh, upper uh, upper middle income, upper upper middle class uh, individuals, maybe who were previously voting Republican, may swing Democrat for someone like Joe Biden, who they see as a moderate. So, what the Trump campaign is trying to do, the Trump campaign tactics right now, is to frame Joe Biden as kind of a hostage to the far left. That the far left has just taken over the party. That it's just the party of Bernie Sanders, AOC, Rashida Tlaib, and that we've taken over. Uh, we've taken over Joe Biden. So that even if, even if Joe Joe Biden actually does in his heart, is in his heart a moderate, he's going to be forced to just go along with the far left and do a crazy Green New Deal and do all kinds of crazy infrastructures. Now, again, I wish that were the case. That's my opinion. I wish that were the case. Unfortunately, that's not the case. We've seen in every single instance, Joe Biden even coming out to say that he would veto Medicare for all if it did get passed through the House and Senate, which even that is, you know, we have uh, all kinds of obstructions when it comes to the House, when it comes to the Senate. But then here we go. We've got to overcome Joe Biden's veto on top of that. He said multiple times now that he would veto Medicare for all. So that clearly doesn't seem to be the case, at least how I read it, how I see it. But it is interesting to see the Donald Trump dynamic, to see the campaign dynamic that they're trying to set, trying to frame Joe Biden as a kind of hostage, frame him as a kind of weak leader, which is, I think, one of the other interesting implications when it comes to how this framing works out which is that by framing Joe Biden as a hostage, framing him as kind of weak, it could be easier to sort of stick on, or I should say it sort of plays along with this concern of Joe Biden's dementia, Joe Biden's, you know, cognitive decline, which we've seen and which I've talked about on this channel, you know, where he talks in sentences and it's not quite clear what he's saying. You can't really follow his sentences and sometimes they seem incoherent. Some people like to say, oh, well, they're just gaffes and Joe Biden's always been doing this. I'm not a doctor. I can't say for sure whether or not like it technically meets the 
criteria of dementia, but there's definitely some weird stuff which has come out of his mouth. Again, we've talked about it on this channel. And so there's sort of this uh, attempt of the Trump campaign to frame Joe Biden as, you know, just sort of this old guy who, you know, has dementia. He can't really quite talk clearly. He's not a clear leader. And so he's just going to end up being dragged. He's just going to end up being dragged by the far left. So the idea, the hope of the Donald Trump campaign is that they can try to rebound some of the polls, rebound in the polling right now by framing Joe Biden as an incompetent leader who's really possessed by the far left in an attempt to prevent crossover sort of moderate voters, um, you know, going to Joe Biden who are like, well, you know, I don't like the stuff. I may not, you know, necessarily normally vote Democrat, but I don't like the stuff Donald Trump has been doing and Joe Biden doesn't seem all that bad. That's the hope that the Trump campaign is trying to do by sort of preventing people um, from taking that view. So it's an interesting thing. It's an interesting development that we're going to have to follow if we want to understand the election moving forward, which is that the Donald Trump campaign, again, framing Joe Biden as a sort of incompetent leader, a hostage of the far left. I wish that were the case. Anyway, that's just my opinion about all this. You can let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. But if you did like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button and consider subscribing. Thanks.